welcome. You're watching Medically Speaking, and I am Minakshi Upreti. Now, today we'll be talking about strokes, strokes, which is a leading cause of death and disability in India. Let's talk some numbers, some figures. Around 1.8 million people in India suffer from a stroke every year, and it's early treatment, the early detection is the only thing. Uh, it's the most crucial thing which can actually reduce morbidity and mortality. Now, there are a very few neurologists in India, the, the ratio of neurologists per patient is really skewed. And that's one of the reasons why we have all the experts who you see on our screen. They are from IIT Delhi or Ames New Delhi, two elite institutes which came together and, and they created a comprehensive package, what they call care that uh, for patients who are suffering from strokes for caregivers it has a, a gamut of things included uh, in the same uh, i'd first of all like to welcome all my guests and introduce them further i'll hand over to them to explain what care that is about what are the various ventures under it first of all i have dr padma uh, she's a chief neuroscience center uh, from aims um, then dr senthil kumaran a professor department of nuclear medicine resonance from aims uh, I also have uh, Dr. Vaivi Vishnu, he's an associate professor, neurology from AIMS, uh, and Dr. Uh, Amit Mahendrita, he's an associate professor uh, from the Biomedical Engineering Department of AIMS and the IIT Delhi. I'm going to start with you, uh, Dr. Padma, if you could just first of all explain us uh, have been undertaken under the same, uh, and give us a brief, you know, for our viewers, those who are watching the show, on what exactly uh, this collaboration between AIMS and IIT Delhi entails? What exactly is care that? What are your objectives from the same, ma'am? Thank you, Minakshi. And thanks for having us on board, yes. So, um, well, stroke statistics are humongous, right, draconian in figures, and you rightly said that. And I think just to put it in perspective, as I speak with you, there's a stroke happening every 20 seconds and one stroke death every two minutes. So besides the fact that you draw home so you know wonderfully that yes, time is brain and you need to unclog an artery which is clogged and every second, which is lost, there are you know zillions and trillions of neurons which are lost forever. All said that. You know, besides the fact that there is this glamorous part of it that you need to unclog, go in and give an IV medication or take in a stent and retrieve the clot and get the blood supply in time. Well, when, even in the best of centers, you will have just a percentage who would get this, you know. Mm. And, it, in, and in fact, if you look at India, it's not more than 5% who are able to reach out and get this treatment. So what happens to even those who get this and what happens to those 95% who could not get this treatment? So they're left with a disability. And that's the reason we say that stroke is life altering because besides, as you said, mortality, death, it's a morbidity, it's a disability, which alters life suddenly, severely, yeah. and forever. So in terms of disability, what can we do? Can we go beyond just saying exercise, live, you know, ably, stop smoking, take medicines, and prevent another stroke? Can we do something to a disability, to someone who's lost his speech, to someone who can't use the hand and leg, who can't walk, who can't balance? who's now in bed and is dependent on others for his activities of daily living, is not a useful member in the society. So for that, we were looking at ways and means of going beyond the conventional aspects. Okay. And in this, we thought we can have this trans, you know, the transdisciplinary sciences which can come together, which has been the focus across most areas of you know major public interest whether it is pollution whether it is climate change whether it's a major disease burden so in this we partnered with iit in the sense that can we go beyond exercises so in this the kdat program essentially is something to get the disability reduced and make a disabled person able to function that's a broad okay. concept and besides that we also have young entrepreneurship of our you know uh, our own research people on my own faculty brilliant faculty who come out with certain kind of you know apps 
which you know this is this is this is the app world right now meenakshi so we have apps for everything so we thought why not use this low cost india centric venture where india is the it almost an it capital mm -hmm. in at least a developing world so in that can we use this science and reach out to people who are physicians who are not neurologists as you said it is extremely skewed kind of yeah. ratio we have train them to treat stroke in a time lock manner again driving home the point the time is brain so give them the bodus <coughs> operandi to when the patient has reached in time give the treatment in time so these are the you know the broad concepts so further okay. on i will uh, i would like you to you know get across to iit delhi all right to cool. tell you about the biomedical engineering part about those robotics and appliances and assisted devices yes. which help in making a disabled person able all right so there are various aspects of it ma'am and thank you for explaining it so beautifully and of, of course in such an easy language for the layman now talking about three various aspects one of course is um, a glove which um, of course helps uh, a disabled person gain ability some mobility which you just spoke about then you have the app and then of course you also have something called as impetus for educational institutes and i'll be dwelling on all three elaborately but first uh, let's uh, bring in dr amit he is representing iit delhi today thank you sir for joining us now as dr padma was talking about help us understand cuz you know the the shows are watched by a, a lot of common men very simple term help us understand really what is the assistive technology which you have developed as far as it means that um, glove is concerned or how are you or how is iit delhi really collaborating with aims um how are these two institutes coming together and helping the disabled via technology well uh, thank you nakshi for having us on group uh, so iit delhi and aims share a very unique uh, uh, mingle together it's a joint activity that is uh, very unique to the indian ecosystem where a technological institute pioneering in the technology or engineering world and another is a medical institute who delivers real health uh, healthcare related solutions to the society and care that is a joint venture of both the institute under the aegis of icmr and we have been working together for a long time now with the team of the clinical partners at aims so far we have developed two products right now one is yeah. a robotic exoskeleton mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is for uh, upper limb which is exactly for wrist and finger movement to do this okay. kind of movement mm -hmm. you must appreciate this is a very uh important movement for yes it, it may injury. sound very simple to someone watching it but of course for someone who's had a stroke it it really uh, being able to do that does mean um, you know coming leaps and bounds yeah so this movement is very very uh, required for day to day activities like opening a knob of the door doing yeah. your toothbrush uh, taking a bath or buttoning your shirt so this and these muscles are very small muscles and very delayed in uh, rehabilitation for after a stroke mostly patients are rehabilitated and the movements of the shoulder elbow and the proximal joints what we call that is closure to the body are much larger bulky muscles and they are rehabilitated much faster whereas these smaller muscles rehabilitated much slower and as the patient undergoes physiotherapy for years and years it's a very very tedious process both patient caregiver and physiotherapist has to do that journey together to reach that end point where these small muscles are rehabilitated now the idea was can we facilitate okay. with technology the recovery of these muscles better so there is a science behind it hmm. and there is a product which uh, evaluate that science and come out with a solution so the idea is if we enforce patients to do this movement repeatedly with assistive technology in our case it's a robotic device the brain will learn the skill to do this muscle and in technically what we call is neuroplasticity that as a child learns the new activity as you enforce it again and again and again so yeah. with the technology if we enforce this to patient the brain will learn this task over a period of time mm. and we have developed this device in last 4 years it is now entering the phase 3 clinical trials where we'll uh, evaluate it on a large cohort of patients and then the product would be ready for uh, uh, market or commercialization that is little part Okay, yeah. so I have I I have follow up question. Um, I'm being very inquisitive. You said it's a low cost exoskeleton. Yeah. Um, you know, in a country like India, of course, it's the low cost technology which is 
which is of course a low hanging fruit which we all really look forward to help us understand you say it's a prototype you have to test it on a large number of patients first of all how many uh, patients have you tested it on when you say low cost what really is the cost how feasible it is when we speak of rural india also and have you got patents for it sir yeah certainly so we have patented this technology in india us <coughs> europe okay. and uk and uh, uh, by low cost means the bill of materials that is what we have spent to develop one prototype obviously there is a cost which goes in research but if you, yeah. you ask me to develop one prototype again the cost has been optimized and it is like within few thousands wherever the solution similar to it which are mostly imported runs in like lakhs and mostly in crores the idea is that most of these solutions are uh, large bulky and are at large or big hospital or centers where patient has to go and do this activity okay and it is not a medicine or it's not a process that it will be done for a week and then the patient will be back to normal it's a long process that has to go for probably months or maybe sometimes years now there are limitations in our uh, society that if patient has to go to a hospital to yes. avail this facility there is a cost of living for the patient cost of living for the uh, caregiver who is accompanying the patient these are dependent patients and they have an activity or uh, cost or wages to earn and that all is affected if this process has to be done over a period of years now mm -hmm. the low cost solution is very portable it is like a desktop mounted solution a physiotherapist can carry it to the home or we can uh, put it in a small phc level or rural settings or even at the panchayat level patients can come there yes do the uh, activity for one hour per day and then go back home and the device can be used by multiple patients to optimize the cost even further all right uh, point point taken sir and uh, apologies for digressing a little uh, let, let's just let's just come back to really um, more aspects of the same since we've spoken of this uh, technological advancement uh, you know uh, these prototype gloves which you have developed let's now talk about the app uh, dr kumaran if you could just tell us a little bit about uh, what the app entails and um, as dr amit also spoke about you know the rural uh, areas how access to neurologists access to physiotherapists is extremely restricted in in rural areas how do you think this app which you all have jointly developed how can it help sir Minakshi, if I may come in, app sure, was developed. App was developed by Dr. Vishnu, and the okay. and that uh, glove has me is being developed by Dr. Senthil. So I think so, I I think I should have just, I've, I've asked a question from different people, but all right, Dr. Senthil, I'll I take on your question to Dr. Amit. So I'll ask you uh, another question, Dr. Vishnu. Why don't you take this one? Then thank you, Dr. Padma, for correcting me. Yeah, thank you, thank you for having me. So the idea of uh, the app. is based on the concept that we don't have enough neurologists in this country so it, it is not practically possible to have a neurology specialist treating stroke in all parts of the country so this idea came from dr patma initially uh, for 5 6 years back when she used a whatsapp based technology to, okay. to treat uh, patients in himachal pradesh where have only a two or three neurologists were there when she so when she showed that it was successful so we tried to uh, take inspiration from that and create an app where not only can help a physician to not only to guide have a neurologist in a tertiary center guide a physician sitting in a remote area how to treat stroke patients and also provide them a tele rehab facility within the app so so we have developed the app and we are trying to test it out in a cluster randomized trial along comparing with the stroke physician model the other model is to just train the physicians on how to manage stroke patients once and then leave it leave them on their own to manage stroke patients so we are trying to see whether which one of these thing will work if this is if this works out this app model works out and it will be a great model for the policy makers to link the existing neurologists to the physicians across the country so that uh, everyone has at least a nodal neurologist who can mm. guide them in managing acute stroke patients so okay yeah. all right so why don't i take the question to dr padma ma'am tell us a little more about you know what are the type of activities you have planned for say uh, the coming year or two years um tell us a little more about you know the tie ups which you have with um asha workers primary health care centers how do you plan to take uh what you have developed this technological advancement to the remotest corner of our country ma'am thank you minakshi so actually that's the crux of the issue mm -hmm. is that we do have the excellence in terms of the the science and also across disciplines whether it's engineering whether it is medicine whether it is you know bench work which is you know basic sciences and which you've seen that in terms of need how everything got together and covid 
era was the perfect example for that. Yeah. Now, the only problem here is that sitting in ivory towers and confined to an urban setting is not going to work for our country. And we are concerned about our country, which is a prototype of a developing world. And we have a three-tier system of healthcare delivery. So we do have a primary, secondary, and a tertiary. So primary healthcare delivery system is primarily two things, Meenakshi. One is prevention, and the second is identification of a problem to be able to refer in time to the next level. Because at a PHC level, a lot of stuff cannot be done. In terms of whether, you know, I can't have a CT scan position there. Unless I have a blood marker, mm. like, you know, identify a heart attack, you do yeah. the pin trick and able to identify, you need a CT to identify a stroke in managing a stroke. So I, can, I can't expect that. And that is true across the world. So at a PHC level, the primary aim is prevention. Like in prevention, you have immunization, picking up blood pressure, you know, gyne you know, the gynecological services, safe delivery, all these things come under a PHC. So prevention of an issue and identification of problems. So identifying strokes would be there. The second step would be as to what are those situations, what are the red flags where they're getting referred to a district level. Now, a secondary level, I mean, actually will cater to a large section, almost 70% of our population are in this wheel where they can access a district level hospital. And in that, you can have this healthcare system, both in terms of delivery of an acute care, that is, you know, the, the app comes there, you can train the physician. And that's what when, when you know, it happened in Himachal and the first clot lysing or managing an acute stroke patient, a brain attack patient was done by an orthopedician because mm. he was the one who was managing the emergency and this is an emergency. Yeah. So brain attack, heart attack, trauma, these are all emergencies and that are manned by the emergency physician. So that, that's feasible, we've proved it, we've published that. So at the district level, that's feasible. And the second thing, what is feasible is this low cost, the assistive devices whether in terms of you know stimulating the brain whether it is an exoskeleton which is which is portable small little stuff which can be positioned at a district level mm -hmm. and trained so these are the things which you have been it's possible to station them and deliver them and it is also has a potential to for what is called a scalability sustainability and also upscale it so I think that's a feasible option. And of course, tertiary care centers would remain the main hubs. And what I feel is that the future will depend upon networking and developing these wheels and have stroke maps ready. Like, for example, someone in your neighborhood has, God forbid, a heart or a brain attack. That person should know which is the nearest, which is the nearest stroke ready hospital that he can access. Mm -hmm. Not go haywire is to rush, you know, rush into some uh, closed clinic or something. Then the valuable time is lost. Yes. So these are the networks which can be developed. And I foresee that in future, this is a feasible option. So and if we can demonstrate this by a good scientific method and, uh, you know, that is what we're trying to do, then we can give the results to the policymakers and it can be then, you know, integrated into the the policy making and implementation system in the healthcare system. And, and you know, stroke is one of the identified and focused areas in both our non communicable disorders and NPCDS program in the government of India. Well, absolutely. And, uh, you know, let me, take, let me take this, you know, thought forward and Dr. Ramit, uh, take us through really when can we see? Dr. Padma has, you know, told us a little bit about the vision. But when do we see um, the app which you have developed, perhaps the devices which you all have developed together, when can we see a ground implementation of the same on, a, if not a pan-India level, but a bigger level, you know, outside of the sample figures we're talking about right now? Well, certainly the objective is to get it out as soon as possible. And that is the vision that we all of us share together. And that is what we really want. Now, once the science and the product has been optimized, as the as Ma'am has said, that it is scalable, sustainable, and uh, the manpower at the district level can be trained to execute that process, then it is ready to launch. So, if you ask me the timelines, I'm expecting that within next one and a half to two years, we'll be able okay. to finish the third phase clinical trial of the robotic exoskeleton device. Parallelly, we are communicating with a couple of industries 
we at iit and aims we have a startup ecosystem which is very strong so it might be possible with some startups or with uh, other industries we are trying that after two years it should be scalable directly after that and it would be developed in parallel with the industry inputs we don't want a lag there regarding the app i think the app is uh, scalable probably which will be able to tell better but i'm expecting that at a small scale not pan india we should be ready to launch maybe in a year and a half something in that range all right then, dr uh, dr vishnu uh, let me let me take that question to dr vishnu now uh, uh dr vishnu tell us a little bit about timeline as far as the app is concerned and is the app strictly for uh, perhaps a physiotherapist or can perhaps a, a layman also develop uh, or download the app and learn something from it um, at least basic physiotherapic techniques uh, if that makes sense at all and uh, implement um, for their you know their caregiver for a stroke patient is that possible dr vishnu yeah so, oh, so something to look forward to i think we it's a great idea to have but at present the app is for primarily for a physicians uh, physicians and the neurologist now whether the the app has been completely been made it's been successfully made it has been pilot tested in the six uh, tertiary care centers in the country it has been tested in the district hospitals now we are starting with the study the study has been initiated so i think we get we think that the results should be out in a year maximum in a year we should get the results how the app performs in uh, in, the, uh, in the trial settings once we confirm that the uh, app works and it is as good as this stroke physician or even better than the stroke physician group or the standard of care group that we can provide then it can be scaled up the scaling up in the app has been made the scaling up is okay up to the policy makers and the administrators how much they want to take it up and uh, and implement it minakshi right. i may i may want to yes. come in here and say that yes what as you said eventually the app should also be what is you know there are there are there there would be levels at okay. as to what what level the physiotherapy methods and methodologies to caregiver and family based you know rehabilitation has already been tested out and this is a published trial is a major trial called etten trial which has been published so it is feasible how much mm -hmm. it is successful we still are trying to go for answers there but that would be the final aim that you are taking this back to the family to the society wherein everything is not dependent only on reaching out to a, a healthcare facility you could also become self reliant yeah. and in that apps will definitely help and that would also be one of the main goals uh, to be achieved in this yeah absolutely in considering every second person in our country even if it's people of rural setting at least has a, a smartphone in their hands and now with digital india wifi access is also becoming slightly better it's not as much of course as compared to urban areas but it's much better than it is than it than what it was 10 years ago and dr kumaran since we're speaking of time timelines you've developed of course uh, this assistive glove um and other techniques as a little more about timelines you're looking um the number of centers number of healthcare workers you plan to reach out to sir Yeah, the smart gloves, the design part, and the procurement is already on. So we expect that the uh, prototype to be ready in six, eight months, and we'll be able to generate sufficient data to optimize and improve the design in one year time. So within one and a half to two years, we are uh, ready with the first. to face where the gloves will be marketed to uh, the people i mean we will be trying it out at various centers uh, and we can use it with a tablet the low cost tablet which are available for 2500 rupees along with that the smart gloves and this will be given to the facility the third phase will be to make it using actuators basically the some patients won't be able to move the fingers the phalangeal joints using the flexon or the extension movement or the supination and pronation so there will be assistive devices like you have motors and actuators which will do that so that is going to be the next phase Okay. And the brain machine interface is going to be the th third phase of that, and we'll be trying to achieve the low cost. The co we are not looking at cost optimization in the very beginning, and it will be after all the prototypes are ready that we'll be uh, looking at the cost optimization. So by fourth year, we'll be able to achieve all the targets. But the simplest right. problem will be ready in one year. All right. Uh, point taken. So timelines, of course, seem very practical. Doctor Padma, you know, you had earlier spoken about how uh, an orthopedic uh, surgeon could take care of a stroke patient when emergency care was required. I, I believe a part of the uh, you know the entire uh, program uh, which you have developed is also giving these uh, cross specialization um, 
knowledge to people you are also reaching out to medical students and colleges as well uh, uh, rather that's the plan via the app uh, to improve stroke care isn't it ma'am yeah the app is of course the stroke care delivery system and the other the education module which has been developed by professor rohit bhatia he is my senior colleague again from my department that's the impetus which uh, we will not be discussed It's not exactly a solution module. So that is also across how to take care of a stroke patient in a uniform way okay. across the country can be implemented. So that's also a study form, and that is being uh, that's being developed by Professor Rohit Bhatia, my colleague in the same department. But the app part of it, as you said, yes, that is something which is hand holding the physicians, and really, Minakshi, if this is this really comes out to be okay, and if it gets this, you know, in in a way, this is a telemedicine, and you understand that the ICMR and as well as the Ministry of Health has come out with the telemedicine guidelines, and for these focused areas, that is cancer. the cardiovascular disorders that is the cardiac primarily the diabetes and stroke these are the four areas wherein the along with the uh, what we call as the part of icmr with the ministry is coming out and is releasing the guidelines and their their meeting is on the 12th of this month so the, the, this is such a hugely integral and important part now of healthcare delivery system and this uh, tele part has been really pushed up now really upscale to a great extent because of the covid time we realize how important it is now to have the tele part of it so the tele stroke part of the tele stroke is what this app base is all about in in terms of connecting distantly remotely expeditiously expeditiously and you know also judicious uh, delivery of optimal healthcare for all Well, absolutely, that's the goal, and a very no, uh, a very noble and noble goal. I wish you all all the best. Uh, it's rather exciting, a very very innovative uh, technique which you all have developed. Uh, first of its kind in India. Looking forward. Thank you for uh, you know giving thank us you. a very very detailed breakthrough on it. It's been a very riveting session. Thank you all for joining us. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.